first. Um, as more people are beginning to sign on, please state your name and um, where you're from, insert your LinkedIn URL so that way people could connect with each other um, afterwards. And you could create, and you could then you could collaborate and talk about the credible information that Kelly is going to share, so you can apply that into your personal life and into your job search. Um, so, a short brief introduction: A Thousand Hires is a community all about empowering the job seeker, creating leaders. We want you to become a leader, and that way you could create a community of paying it forward. We do multiple, multiple different types of initiatives, um, everything from webinars um, to video resumes to different types of cover letters to mentorship events and multiple other different incredible things but today it's about our wonderful wonderful guest kelly um kelly's going to give her, her her own introduction because anything i say will not do any type of justice um but she's going to share an incredible incredible presentation she worked on that what we can do how we can make our job search more strategic um, and the format will be she will go through a presentation in the meantime if you have any questions feel free to write them out or ask them in the comment box and then she will try to address every single one of them afterwards and then we'll be followed by um closing remarks but without further ado i want to introduce our incredible guest kelly all right i'm assuming everyone can hear me okay mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, it's really great to be here. Thank you. I was just just checking out all of the all the nineteen of us that are here, and I, I love the the diversity. And I see a lot of senior people and HR folks, and it's it's great to meet you all. Um, feel free to connect to me on LinkedIn and 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 whatnot. But I'm really hoping we can have kind of a group conversation here. Um, I know you might, might not be able to speak, but if you can, um, feel free to jump in. If not, um, I will have the comments box open the whole time. And so I'm really here for you all versus um, kind of a long, dry, boring presentation. So I really encourage you to, to throw in questions, comments. I will stop intermittently and um, address every one of them. So I'd love to try to get a, a conversation going as best we can. Um, so with that, let me go ahead and share kind of just an, an, a really an outline here. Um, and I love a good gift game. So, you know, I threw, I threw some giffies in along the way. Um, but this is really just an outline for us to kind of facilitate through versus a presentation. So again, please jump in, throw in questions and comments. Otherwise, this, this might be a pretty short uh, session. So uh, really happy to be here. I love, you know, speaking. I love connecting with new people. Um, I love this it's industry and tech. I love, you know, people roles, people leadership roles. Uh, my background, um, born and raised in the Bay Area in California and um, live in the Bay Area currently uh, on the peninsula in San Carlos, if, if um, you all know, anyone knows it. Uh, and I've been, you know, really in the HR world for over 20 years now. Um, yep, go California. I love it. Um, we're all shutting down here. If you're from here, it's, it's actually not great right now, but we'll all get through it as we have been this year. Um, but yeah, my background, I, I, I love this profession. I think it's really fun. I love building companies and building teams. Um, I spent you know the first 10 years of my career in, in later stage companies between Intuit and Yahoo, um, probably familiar with one or both of those. And the, the past, I'd say 11 or 12 years um, in chief people officer roles, uh, really scaling early stage uh, venture companies uh, quickly. So Yahoo, I mean, so GitHub, if I'm familiar with GitHub and Hired and Looker um, most recently, and we got acquired by Google. So we've been working on the Looker integration into Google Cloud for the past year. Uh, and then I actually, this isn't even public yet, so you're the first ones to really hear it. I have just accepted the chief people officer role at Pendo, um, which is also a SaaS enterprise uh, cloud analytics product based out of Raleigh, North Carolina, and they're all over the world. So I'm going to be starting there in mid-January. I'm really excited for that. Um, but along the way, you know, we're all professionals here and, you know, have been in 
in roles in different industries and, and whatnot and you know kicking off a job search and kind of engaging in this process um, takes a lot of time and a lot of energy um, and it can also be really overwhelming um, and and whatnot right and so I think my last interview process I think I spent upwards of at least 40 to, to 50 hours kind of all in right talking with folks and it definitely can be draining it feels like a separate job a lot of times and so Today, you know, just would love to hear, you know, your your personal situations. There's only 20 of us on the call, so if I can answer questions, um, you know, you have situations you're going through, advice. Um, you know, I, I loosely organize this around like kind of how how do you kick off a search and what mindset, um, you know, to go into with that. Um, the second phase, really, when you're in the trenches engaged in interviewing uh, with, with different companies and how to think about that process and some tips there. And then following up, right? And kind of, again, some some tips and tricks and advice and, and some things that I've seen and done over the years. Um, that being said, you know, I, again, really the last bullet, please participate um, to Ephraim's comment. If you'd like to ask a question live, just hit the red mic box or throw in, throw in the question. Um, I'll leave a lot of space for doing that, um, which might result in a few awkward silences, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, again, thank you. I look forward to, to having this conversation and hopefully um, you, you take something away um, and we'll, we'll go from there. So kicking off the search, you know, there's, there's a few things here that, that came to mind in thinking about this and, and I'd love to hear again your thoughts feedback questions if, if this resonates but you know and thinking about this it's it's really kind of a go slow to go fast for me you know and and being clear on on what you're really solving for and by that um, again it's thinking holistically about what what you're looking for and why you know a lot of um, folks they just kind of jump in really without doing that and they need a job or they need money and they're just kind of looking for anything and you know, while, while I appreciate that, and sometimes that's absolutely necessary, I think just taking even a day or a couple hours to kind of jot down or type out, you know, the broader why around what you're trying to, to solve for. Um, you know, it's not really, oh, I'm looking for a director of finance role. It's like, yeah, but, but what kind of work are you looking for? What kind of experiences um, are you looking to add to your toolbox, right? What what are you thinking about the journey, right? How is this how is this search or this role going to help you on that journey? And so, again, it's it's just it's almost like a self reflection exercise of um, you know what's beyond just the job description or the salary on this position, um, and so it's going to help you really narrow down kind of what you're thinking about, but also prepare for the interview process because a lot of the interview questions you're going to get um it really are about those things right like what are you what is your goal longer term what are you um what else can you bring to the table besides just the skill sets of that role and so taking again that time to do that um it's going to help you just be even more successful i just saw someone grab the mic i think it was todd no anyone anyone okay any questions or comments so far? Okay, great. So, so again, that's that's really what I've done is is um, being very explicit about the not just the job but but the company, um, and and what I'm looking to gain out of that specific role at that point, um, you know, in my career. Um, the second piece around kicking off the search, just important as the job description and what you're trying to to do, right, the specific role, it's really about the, the optimal environment, right? You're gonna get a lot of questions. I'm, I'm usually the interviewer who asks these questions um, about why, why, why the, the company, right? What about the culture, the vibe? What attracted you to that specific company? Um, and I think, you know, if it's just the job and a paycheck, that's not gonna go really well. So it's like, people wanna know what you're about, um, hiring teams want to know what you care about, uh, what your values are, what what you can add to that culture, right? A lot of us have heard 
the term uh, culture ad versus culture fits now. And it's like, talent isn't just a body um, to kind of do these jobs. They, they, they want to understand what you're going to add to the team, to the overall company beyond just your job or your team or your, your role. And so really defining, it's almost like, you know, a dating profile or a relationship, right? Like what, what is important to you? What are you expecting from your optimal working environment? Because it's all over the map. It could be formal or informal. People can communicate verbally versus written it could be like it's it just depends on how you work and really being in tune with that is going to help you narrow down not just the job but the company um and it's going to better prepare you for that interview process i'll stop here if there's any like questions or personal things you guys are going through that i can touch on around this Okay, we're good. so do I have to give up the mic? Is that kind of here? Let me let me try this. Just press, uh, just yeah, just press. Uh, okay. I I am sorry. I've no worries here. I press the first guy that comes. Let's see, the, Greg. You have a second. I've never used. Can you hear me right now? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, I've never used this before, so um, I'm just gonna. So I'll select the mic. The first one we have by is Mary Lynn, so she'll be going ahead. Mary Lynn, you have the ability to get the press the mic now. There you go. Okay, Mom. Thanks. <laughs> it worked. Yeah. Um, hi, hi, Kelly. Thank you for doing this. I live in a very small town in the mountains of North Carolina, ways out from Raleigh. Um, five, well, it's almost six years ago now, but short, shortly after the um, economic collapse, I was looking for a job, and it literally took me five years to find a job in Asheville. Wow. So oh, here I am again, <laughs> yes. job searching. Um, luckily, there is the option now more so to be a remote staff member. So I'm kind of counting on that. And I've been applying to positions in Charlotte, which is two hours away, but the closest city with anything. Yep. Yep. And Admittedly, I haven't been full force in it because I've been working some internships to upskill as well. So I haven't really, you know, put all my chips in on a job search. But I also haven't heard anything from anything I've submitted. My challenge comes from I don't know anybody in Charlotte. So my network is, you know, busy and active, but I don't even know where those people live because they're on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not having any success when I reach out to folks who are in Charlotte, um, you know, and I'm doing it the same sort of way. Hey, I see that you're in blah, 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 or you've done X and such or whatever, you know, love to connect and I'm not getting anything. So I feel like this is really a long term, long term strategy. And I don't want to do another long term job search. So I'm wondering what pointers you might have. Yeah, I think it's a great question. And I see, um, S, sorry, I don't know your first name. S. Sato was asking about, you know, networking in, et cetera. So this is really the third point on this slide, which I think, you know, might be kind of my my biggest takeaway for you all is the cold online applications. It's just not the way to go, um, you know. And and I hate to say it, but you know, the, the real the real talk of it is that by the time those things are posted, you know, there's already a lot of candidates in process, right? And how does that happen? Because if people know people, you know, and not all the time, of course, and you want to round out and look at applicants, et cetera, but the, 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 the chance already narrows, right? Because in, especially in tech, et cetera, right? These, these companies, that, that network is the way that these things happen. Um, you know, I remember when I was first starting, I think I, you know, I spent just days just applying, 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 and it would just black mm -hmm. hole, black hole, black hole. And it makes you want to jump out a window. I mean, it's, it's very frustrating. Um, you can spend days doing that and, and, and remain frustrated and may, maybe it'll hit one time, et cetera. Or you can spend days, right, reaching out on LinkedIn, talking to people, asking for intros, um, 
And it might take just as, as much time, it might take less time, but it's much more strategic, right? So I can't, I can't emphasize enough how much I would not do the cold applications. I would spend more of my time doing cold LinkedIn's, to be honest with you. And I, I also wouldn't just hinder yourself to the geo, the area, because now everyone's remote, right? And I mean, look at Pendo, I, I'm in California, 6% of the company is based in Raleigh and everyone else is all over the world and people are working at home. And so we're going to, I think we're going to continue to see this um, pattern of, of people all over. And so don't limit yourself just to Charlotte or right. Try your, your focus, right. I saw you're a business scientist, right? Like try different searches of people that do things that you do no matter where they live, because you kick out a hundred LinkedIn messages you'll probably get maybe 30 back, right? If we're doing statistics, mm -hmm. you talk with those 30. Now you have connections all over. Hey, tell me about your company. Do you have opportunities? Oh no, but I know this company does. Let me introduce you to this person. Um, mm -hmm. No, I don't know of any opportunities, but I can introduce you to like six people or leaders that I think are great or HR leaders, right? And all of a sudden now you're spending your time building a network that might be mm -hmm. 50 people. Um, that probably will result in something happening, right? And you cultivate those relationships and things kind of pop up. It's also more strategic because now you've got those 50 people for life, right? You're saving them, you're putting them in your notebook, right? That they're with you throughout your career now. So that, that's what I mean by being more strategic about the search. It's not just for that specific job, it's literally building your network for, forever. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that that's what I would do. I wouldn't limit yourself to North Carolina. I would look for people like you. I would look for HR people, right? I mean, we had HR people on the line here. They're the best way to, to holistically get oh, you. Yeah, on LinkedIn, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, I, I was there. I was like pounding my head against a wall. And, and from that moment on, I said, I will never, ever ignore a request on LinkedIn or a message because you never know, right? I'm a random person, but I'm like, yeah, I was there. Let me let me chat with you for 20 minutes. And I introduce you to five other HR people and two of them have roles, right? So mm -hmm. that that's kind of my view on that. Cool. I don't um, want to come, come view the conversation, but might I ask, um, <laughs> lots of people advocate that you should pursue a particular company and without knowing like <laughs> what companies to pursue, because like they're all geographically elsewhere. What would you suggest as far as that goes? Just counting on your network to lead you to the right ones? Yeah, I mean, really quick and then we can we can move on. But um, there's a couple ways, right? Companies you just like because you like their products, you like their brand, you know them. Um, I would narrow down. Do you want a bigger company like a Google, a Yahoo, a Facebook, an Intuit, a whatever it is? Do you want an early, more early stage company, right? That's high growth. You want a successful one? Go go search Google. The fastest growing venture backed companies. The bet like th there's hundreds and hundreds of lists, right? That you can kind of target. Yeah. Um, so th those are my 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 ads. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So and, sorry about your name, Amber Polly. Um, what's the best way to ask about company culture beyond asking what is the culture? Yeah, um, that's kind of like don't define the word by using the word. Um, ask how they work. You know, ask, um, hey, what's it what's it like day to day working here? Like, tell me about the personality of the company. Um, what kind of what kind of environment is it? Is it formal or informal? How do people communicate? Um, how do decisions get made? Right. I mean, th these are basically anything you can think of around how humans behave. Just ask how the organization does it. But that's my early. That's my quick one on that one. Um, Alumni groups, family, friends, common interests. A absolutely. I think um, all of those things are a yes. In my book, you know, the, mo the more the merrier. Um, if you're interested in a certain company, hit everything you can think of around that company, contacts, alumni groups, et cetera. It's a, it's a great way to kind of, again, diversify. Um, LinkedIn is an experiment. Try searching business, science, remote. Yeah, posts on people that you, you literally could get thousands of results. I completely agree. Um, I, again, I just want to close out that 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 time spent making real connections and 
talking to people and then leading you to other things is, is just way better than time spent blindly doing applications and submitting them into black holes. Um, and don't forget HR people, right? If you're interested in the company, search HR business partner, HR at, you'll get a lot of people and they might wanna talk to you. And, and they know the bird's eye view of what's going on in that company. So I really recommend hanging out with HR people. I, I never thought I'd say that, but we can be helpful. Yes, we have a bunch of people requesting the mic. Great. Um, so you have the mic button. So we have Greg is up next and we have Eli and then we have Todd. So let's go Greg, go ahead. Hey. Hi. Hey, how are you guys doing? Hey, Ephraim. Hey, um, I wanted to ask, like, basically, um, you know, I caught the virus of the year, oh. like, back in March. Sorry to hear and that. And ever since then, it was like a downward spiral. Uh, you know, I got better. So, like, that's the great thing about it. But, you know, I've been ready to work, and I'm just, like, constantly looking. And I just... I feel like people are, you know, they're distracted, you know, by so many things like, um, you know, reaching out to people. There's just so many touch points that people have to deal with every day yeah. that it seems like they're, you know, maybe they'll get back to you. Maybe they have the best of intentions too, but they don't, or maybe they just don't, which is fine too. Um, but like I've been targeting companies and I haven't heard much back from them. I want to know, like, did you have any particular, um, I guess you could say ways that may have worked for you or for um, some of your peers yeah. to get in touch with people in the age of, you know, 17 social apps on their phone. <laughs> I know, yeah. And I mean, Billy Taylor asked a kind of a similar one maybe that connects, right? How do I approach people on LinkedIn without coming across as can I have a job? Um, you know, I think for me that this isn't kind of, um, you know, you, you, you throw the fishing line out once and like you expect to get a fish or mm -hmm. you don't get one. And so you just don't use the pole again. I mean, it takes it takes perseverance, you know, and it takes follow up. Um, and that's what I mean by cultivating these relationships. Right. Let's just say mm -hmm. someone like me is like, yeah, Greg, let's chat. And nothing really comes of it. Um, without, you know, with the best of intentions, you know, manage your calendar around it, make, make it a job, right? Put, put an invite on your calendar, follow up with Kelly eight weeks later, um, mm -hmm. and just keep circling the wagons because it's also a timing game. Um, it's not like, you know, th these things have to come together, the person, the opportunity and the time. And sometimes right. one's off, you just keep mm -hmm. going around without being, you know, super annoying, but check in. Yeah. Um, and to, to Billy's question, of course, you don't say, hey, can I have a job? But it's like, right, if, if it's some a leader in the company or an HR person, it's like, hey, I, I'm, I'm, I want to learn more about this company. I'd love to understand kind of how, how the interview process works or how, if you have these functions here, what does that look like? Um, mm -hmm. I'd love to know more about the culture. I've heard good things from friends, um, but I know blindly applying sucks, doesn't work, right? And right kind of get that humanity. And also the whole world's going through this, right? If I get a message of like, hey, this COVID thing is rough. I'm trying to get get going again. I could use some advice. Um, you answer. And so I think, you know, now definitely use what we're all feeling and going through, right? Mm -hmm. So that that's kind of some, some things that I've done. Um, you know, and, and I, I'm, I'm broadening my network. We do similar things. I'd love to chat, get your advice, right? Those are the things you open with. Well, thanks, Kelly. Yeah, Eli, let me pass it to you since I'm now a master at this platform. <laughs> Hi, thank you for your time. You know, uh, in all honesty, I think you did a lot of uh, answering my questions, you know, both for myself and I think for the others on the phone. You know, I think one of the challenges is moving from uh, you know, high level strategic advice to kind of more tactical advice. And so I was wondering, you know, if you had any, uh, you know, kind of tactical feedback about networking, you know, so as an example, and maybe this is more of a sharing at this point than, yeah. you know, I have on my to-do list, like, you know, download your list from LinkedIn, identify all the folks that you know versus the ones you're disconnected with. Of those, you know, you know, who would take your call, 
um, you know, from that build out the list of companies that they're connected to, you know, and then network and hit up those connections, you know, have those conversations, you know, I, but I think it's just really kind of getting into that kind of tactical exercise yeah. of engaging this search that I think many people are starving for kind of some of that tactical advice. Yeah. Yes. I am. I, I totally get that. I think with that, look, none of this is going to work unless you're organized, right? If, you, if you're a hot mess, you got post-its everywhere, you forget who you're talking to, you don't, right? You have to, it's almost like blueprinting a house before you build it, right? You don't just go in there because it's, it's, it can get messy really quickly. And so there's no right way, but figure out the way that works for you, right? Determine like, how, how do you best organize stuff um, and create that blueprint before you jump in and start because it fills up really fast. And if you don't have a good way to organize it, remember what you've done, what happened, what's next, who has the ball, take notes, right? So whether it's a spreadsheet, um, a calendar to remind you of stuff, I mean, you gotta treat this thing like a business and a job because the better you do that, the more you have these these connections forever, not just in this point in time, because right. you just forget. So for me, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I've done. Um, I have a Google sheet. Um, it is now like, like a work of science at this point. It's, it has columns that go, you know, when you run out of the columns and now you're at AA and yeah. AB or whatever, it has that. Um, there's, there's filters all over the place. There's drop downs and there's like color coding drop downs. So I can in two seconds pull up this sheet that is now at least a thousand rows. Um, and these aren't like random con, these are like the thousand people that I can call, that I talk to, that I follow up with. Um, I have everyone's name, I have the company they're at, I have, I have the role, but it's a drop down. Are they in HR? Are they in recruiting? Are they a founder? Are they a CEO? Um, is it a VC? Right. And so in two seconds, I can pull up every VC contact in, in this area, in this moment, I can see date when I've last talked to them, notes, right? I mean, it's just, this is the way that works. And over time, it, it just snowballs into goodness, right? And yeah. so people ask me, hey, I, I'm hiring a head of product, Do you know any good search firms? Just go right to my sheet, I filter by exec search product. And I, now I've helped this person with six great firms and now we have a relationship, you never know. I mean, this is how this Pendo job came up. It, it was through networks, right? And and, and right. again, you cultivate those forever, not just when you need something. I think that, that's really the key is you're giving back, you're connecting, you, you enjoy doing this. And then over time, there's no more searching because it's just, that's the search and things just come up. Right. Thank you. Um, yeah. So a template or a screenshot of the sheet. Um, yeah, I'm happy to. So can you guys see everything in here? What we can you see your screen. So do you see this, the sheet here? Uh, no, we're still seeing oh. engaging in the interview process, approach this to two-way street. Got it. Um, I'm happy to share, to share, um, what this looks like real quick. If anyone's interested and then I'll move on. All right, so you can see this here. Yes, yeah. no, maybe. All right. So so yeah, I mean you can you can see this, right? CEO, business leader, exec search, HR head. So if someone's like, hey, can you introduce me to some some great um, HR people that, that might help me? I, I just filter this and now you've got HR talent at, at some of the best companies, in my opinion, in the world. Um, and you can help people, you can ch catch up with people, you can recruit, right? And so that's just a quick, I don't wanna divulge too much confidentiality, but hopefully that gives you an idea of what, 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 I, what I was talking about. And again, it, it, there's no right way. It's just, it's just a matter of what, what works for you. Um, Okay, I don't see any, you're welcome, Billy. <laughs> I don't see anyone else in the mic unless someone wants to pop in. Um, so Tish asked about career pivots. 
Yeah. Do you want me to grab the mic, Tish, and explain? I'd love a little more context on what, what you mean by that. That would be great. Yeah, Yvonne, is, it, it's brilliant, actually, especially in HR. Those sheets can really help. Um, career pivots. Can you talk a little more about planning the optimal direction in which to pivot? Um, yeah, let me give the mic here to Tish, and she can pop in for us. Hi, um, Hi, I think specifically because I'm in event management and primarily worked in hotels. And of course I've been furloughed since March and our date of return keeps getting pushed back because of COVID, especially here in California. Mm -hmm. So I recently got my CMP, which was a plan pre pandemic. So it's not very helpful now, but I've been studying for the PMP, which is project management. And I think it has some transferable skills, but since I've never held a position um, with that title or really that hasn't been my primary role, not really sure what's the best way to kind of pivot and what roles you should target. And um, yeah. mostly my network is an event. So now it's trying to rebuild yeah. a network in a different field and not really sure the best way to start. I guess yeah. just do what I did before, but do it in the project management world. Yeah, and this is like general project management? Uh, uh, correct, because I'm still trying to figure out which direction I want to go into. I have yep. a friend who does it um, in the government sector, but I'm not sure that's what I want to do. I think I'd probably be more um, attuned to wanting to be more like on the IT side. Um, yep, yep. Yeah, no, I think one, I would, first of all, I would filter and write down and think about everything that you've done in the past roles mm -hmm. and positions okay. that can bridge over to project management, right? And so the goal, the goal isn't to talk about events to project management. The goal is to talk about the things that you did in events that were basically project management. So yeah. it's, you wanna, again, bridge these things over and accent the events role around more of a project management bent. Um, take a look at project management job specs look how they read, look at the things they do. Can you pick out or connect anything that you've done to that, right? And so get that all organized and clean that up first, put it on LinkedIn, make sure that those roles are accented more around that, and then start doing everything we just talked about, right? Reach out yeah. to other project managers, say, hey, you know, how'd you get into this? I'm, I'm learning, and so now you have, you know, a merry band of friends that are project managers. Yeah. Maybe they know of roles or can, you know, you have four that, really get to like you over the next two months or month and they're referring you and blah, blah, blah. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, create the sheet for project managers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yes, hospitality folks, Unite, of course. Um, so yeah, Tish's question, sorry, the optimal direction in which to pivot. Elena, I'm not sure, um, I'm not sure I can tell you the optimal direction. Um, in which to pivot, but I think my, my, and please grab the mic if I'm missing something. My advice again would be not to focus on the difference, focus on how they connect together. There she goes, okay. Um, and how you can bridge the two, the two roles. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll add a little bit more clarity because I, I guess that was confusing. I wasn't necessarily asking like, to tell the direction which to pivot, but I think uh, you started this presentation with some good strategies. Oh, you know, identify the culture of the company that you would like to work for and and, and some things like that. Um, I think when I said planning uh, the optimal direction, like, okay, great, you could find out the culture of these companies. How can you begin to identify, you know, for somebody, especially who's early career, you know, what kind of culture, once you find out the culture of all these companies or what size of the company or what roles um, yeah. might be might might be optimal yeah yeah i mean i i'll be honest what when i was really in my career it's it, it just good to experience different ones so i wouldn't stress too much about it when you're earlier in your career but you know you can get a view you you know you, you read you look online right let's say you're interested in a company um, like slack for in instance right like there's enough online where you can research slack right like what's out in the press like look at their career site look at their values look at their like their employment site what is it what does it kind of seem like um to work there so you can you can do a lot of research around around those pieces too um look on glassdoor right you guys heard of glassdoor it's a site 
where you can basically look up any company. Um, it's like a Yelp site for companies that employees can review. And with respect to role, like how uh, sort of, you know, especially with the way the education system has kind of become a little bit disconnected from the workplace in, you know, the past 20 years, how, how might somebody, you know, begin to identify, you know, what kinds of roles match, you know, the areas in, in which they want to grow? Um, let's see. We'll ask, ask that one more time. Like, you know, you mentioned when during Tish's question, sort of looking at the job description and yeah. know, seeing what, what those things are, how, how, how might somebody, you know, strategically be able to look, okay, you know, five years forward and say, okay, this is where I want to grow in five years. This is where I want to do that. How, like based off. Right. You know, yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's, that's a more difficult one, right? Cause that's a personal kind of thing, but you know, I'll go back to the, the HR connections, right? Like I see Yvonne here is the last one that, or, you know, recent comment, right? If, you, if you're talking to folks like us, we can, we can ask some questions, right? Like, like, what are you interested in? Kind of what, what work do you get energy from, right? We, we can take those answers and map them into like functions, right? Oh yeah, that makes sense, right? Like project management at a company, project management can tie into this career path or it can lead to doing this. And so, Again, my advice is to talk through that with folks because they can kind of help you map out how those things work in different types of companies or industries and what the natural career paths are. And you can start to get a feel of kind of how that sits. I'm not sure if that really answered, but I tried my best on <laughs> that one. Um, but I would start with, you know, not, not trying to force yourself into a job spec, but just take a blank sheet of paper and just write down all the things you like to do. Um, write down all the things you don't like to do, right? Write down all the things that you think you're good at and you're not that good at. And then like put it together and then don't worry about labeling it as like project management or HR, just kind of map it all out and then have a bunch of conversations with, with folks that can help you mold it because they've had experience. Yeah. Um, okay, where am I at here? Comments. Uh, do you think glass door reviews are generally accurate? Uh, yeah. Or are they just for the unhappy people? Um, I think it can be both. Um, I think just like anything right out in the world, it's, it's a data point. Um, and, and it can be a helpful data point to just poke at. Right. And so if I'm going for an interview, I'll, I'll read glass door and I'll say, Hey, like, tell me about this. Or I noticed this theme on glass door and it's less, it's less as taken for truth. It's more as, as just having as a data point, using to talk to the interview team um, and just familiarizing yourself, right, with the company. But I'm the first one to say a lot of unhappy, you know, um, you know, employees for whatever reason can, can definitely go on there. Um, Billy pairing glass door reviews and salary estimates with asking questions on blind or fishbowl. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can do that as well. Anonymous tech worker posting boards. I just again, my, my advice there is to not go down the rabbit hole uh, um, as much as you can help it, um, because a lot of times those things are not entirely true. And so, I usually just stop it at Glassdoor. I take it in. I, I I take the data points and I and I connect those data points with other experiences um, I'm having throughout the interview process. Um. Okay, I don't think I see a mic or comment. So let me just talk through this slide and then we can go from there. Um, you know, when you're engaging in an interview process, a lot of times, you know, I was raised to, you know, you answer the questions, you're there for them, you talk about the job and, and, then, and then you go. Um, I think that the world has definitely shifted on this. Um, and I think being prepared to, 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 to ask the, the company questions um, it is a really good thing. Um, if you don't have any questions, that's not a good thing. Uh, and so for really familiarizing yourself with the organization, the business model, as much information as you can. Um, companies really, really, really love when you've done your homework and you can actually ask you know, intelligent questions about their business because you've researched it and you understand the background, you know the mission, you know their values, their people values, their culture, right? You're, you're genuinely curious about 
the direction of the business and the environment, right? And it's very clear when someone kind of hasn't done any, any research and they're not curious at all because we don't get any questions about what it's like to work there. How do they support their employees? Um, you know, again, what are their values? Where's the business going? What are they trying to solve in the world, right? These are things that are this bullet two and three here are really important um, to, to demonstrate that you're, you're interested in that company, right? I mean, how many of you have gotten the question, well, why, why Pendo? Why do you want to come to Pendo, right? You, you should have a point of view on why you chose to interview there. Um, and it, it shouldn't really, it shouldn't be universal, right? Oh, it's a great culture. It, it, it literally should be something specific to that company. Um, and they're going to ask about you, right? I think companies now just don't want bodies to do a job. As I mentioned, they want a culture ad. They want people and talent to, to round out and add value to that company beyond just that job. And so having a point of view on who you are and what you bring to the table, right? Again, what journey you're on, what experiences you want to have, how you want to give back um, and be a part of that company, right? Uh, beyond just going in at nine or whatever it is now um, and leaving, right? There are, there are volunteer opportunities, there are committees, there are cross-functional opportunities, right? There, there's, there's a lot of opportunities to do a lot more um, and get involved in companies. And so again, this, this interview process should, should be just as about you know, you knowing and asking about what you're getting and double clicking into these companies as it is the company asking you questions about your experience or your skill sets. Um, I'll pause here. I know we have uh, maybe like 10 minutes left or so. Uh, my favorite interview question is, I want to be your number one candidate for this position. What questions or concerns can I answer so that you can feel confident that I'm the number one candidate? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good one. Um, the only thing I'll say on that is sometimes that can put people on the spot. Um, it can come across a little presumptuous, like I'm the number one candidate. So just, I'm sure it's, you know, it's, it's all in the delivery. Um, but you know, just, just making sure that it doesn't come across too presumptuous, but that's a great, that is a great question. Um, you know, if I'm if I'm interviewing with a company and I'm, I'm interviewing my manager, which, which is something that we all, do right. Um, I, I like to ask, like, hey, you know, if I if I talk to 30, 30 of your past team members, um, direct reports or peers or people you've worked with, if I sat down with all of them, like, what would they say? Um, what would they say is is great about you and working with you? And what would they say are some areas that you're still learning and developing? Um, and that is a really good example of a two way street. Right. So this this person's like, oh, yeah, this candidate's interested in um, my management style. Like they're on the ball. They're actually interviewing me a little bit, not just me pummeling them with questions. But to your point, said, oh, right there, it, it's how you say that. It's not tell me how you're terrible. It's like, hey, if I talk to 30 people that worked with you over the last three or four years, tell me what they would say. Um, and that 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 puts them in a position where now it's, it has to be honest, right? Because you're asking from the frame of tell me what they would say versus what do you think about yourself? So things like that, right? C curiosity about the person, the team, the company, the business model, really, really important versus just answering the questions they have. Pause, anyone for the mic? I know how to use this now, so. <laughs> All right, this is uh, the last slide and we've had open discussion all along, which is great. Um, the follow-up is really important. Um, oh, I'll give the mic to Nick really quick. Awesome. There you go, Nick. I think um, one, one question that I had in the, in the new COVID world that we're in of, of doing all these over video and, and not being able to go out and have coffee with somebody and kind of do, do some pre-interview stuff and some networking and then kind of sitting down at an office and, you know, having that face-to-face -face or, you know, that, uh, that language and being able to see the body, the body language that everybody's giving. Yeah. And then on the other side of it is now that everyone is remote. Uh, a lot of the jobs I've looked at have said, you know, we want to be in Atlanta, but remote now, everything's remote. Every, it's okay. Remote now. What do you think the sort of 
style or how to ask the question of, you know, well, I don't want to move, you know, kind of it's, you know, yes. how do we stay that remote or is it like in six months when the vaccine is done, I should be expected to pick up and yeah. move? Yeah. It's sort of an awkward question, but also, again, if it works for six months, why can't it work longer? And that's yeah. Trying to figure out around it, kind of a niche industry that doesn't have a lot of, uh, yeah. um, you know, thousands of job openings. So it's certainly something I'm trying right. to figure out. Yeah, no, I think everyone's grappling with that. And um, it's 100% a fair question, right? I mean, I asked it, right? I'm working for a company that's headquartered out of out of North Carolina. Um, and I think that the, the, the money question there is, hey, tell me about like your current philosophy or point of view on return to work or return to office. Um, you know, some companies have gone really left wing, Microsoft, Twitter saying remote forever. Other companies are all the way over here saying we're going to be back in. H have you all thought about that? Um, and do you have a, a clear point of view or a strong opinion on that? Thanks. Yeah, of course. Um, I, before I forget, I'm going to throw my email here. If anyone wants to follow up um, or if anyone wants this presentation, it's definitely not confidential. So I'm happy to share it. Just email me um, for anything else before we end. Um, so yeah, so with nine minutes left, I think the follow-up is key. We talked a little bit about this, um, right? The goal is to be not annoying and not pester, but to be persistent. And um, again, I think that that, that follow-up for me, um, I think three days, right? Two, three days is a good, a good way to do that um, as far as follow-up if you do not hear back. Um, I skipped bullet one, which I shouldn't have. If, if you all do not send thank you emails, please send them. Um, ask immediately the recruiter or whoever it is, like, hey, can I have the emails of everyone that I talked through? Um, don't wait a day uh, to send thank you emails. Um, I, I send them right there, like three hours later that evening, right? The, those interviewers, you're fresh in their mind right, 24, 48 hours later, with everything going on, they might forget. So really be diligent about sending those e thank you emails. Um, the, the important thing here is to customize them, right? A, a copy paste email to six interviewers, it's it's just suicide. Um, you know, we, we share them, right? We, we wanna know if candidates are thanking us. Like I, I literally will forward a thank you email to everyone on the interview team. Um, so that happens. So if you're copying and pasting, doesn't look really good. So you want to you want to customize like three sentences, right, or four sentences about your specific conversation with with that person. Um, again, the role doesn't work out. It doesn't work out, right? Um, every single interviewer that I've interviewed with um, is in my sheet, right? You are adding them right? You, you now, even if the, you don't want the role or you weren't the right candidates, you now have seven contacts at that company. Um, you, and you now have seven contacts that are going to go to other companies, right? And now you, you know, you fast forward one, two, three years, you've got seven contacts and seven new companies that are, you know, candidates for you or potential roles for you, right? And so people, remember, people, People get promoted, they get bigger roles and positions over time, people move around. And so the earlier you start a sheet like that, um, the, the, the more widespread your network is, is getting by virtue of doing nothing. It's almost like putting money in an investment account, right? Everyone's you know, getting bigger roles and moving around and now you have more companies and more contacts just because of time. Um, so that, those, are my, those are my tidbits on um, the follow-up, which I think is really important. Yeah, George, remote work does work well. I work remotely for Tinder. Yeah, I, I think it's been working well too. I mean, we had a thousand people at Looker and we all onboarded into Google remotely and I think it went okay. So, I mean, for me, I think it just, it, it really just comes down to the personality of that company, right? Um, you know, it's just a preference. Do they want people in person? Do they not? Do they want sometimes? I mean, I, I personally like the hybrid model. I think that's probably going to be the flavor of choice for a lot of companies. Fast forward a year is some remote, some, you know, come in flexibility, but the, the flexibility piece is going to be, um, I don't think that's ever going to go away. 
Um, I'm going to stop there. I know we have five minutes. Uh, any other comments or Ephraim, do you want to jump in? But I'm happy to, again, follow up anytime. Well, first of all, that was absolutely amazing. Um, that was incredible. I personally learned a lot. And I think the biggest thing is give back to you is when everyone takes something they learn from here and actually apply yeah. it and use it out. That's the biggest way of saying a thank you. Um, so I know yeah. personally we're going to do something. Um, I'm sure everyone else is going to do something. Um, I personally want that spreadsheet that had all the, had, that had all the top HR people. That's what I want. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every time I talk to someone, like when I first met you, Ephraim, like we were literally chatting and I, I threw your email in the sheet before I forgot. You can fill out the details later, but, um, you know, putting, putting great people you meet over the years, real time in that, it's just, it's really helpful. And such a great way to stay organized. Such a great way. And, um, you know, before we forget, we, we, on behalf of myself and Thousand Hires and everyone here, you know, congratulations on accepting that role of Pendo. I know you're going to kick, you're going to do amazing. Um, you're going to really, really, you know, incredible work. Um, you're going to definitely change. I mean, I'm sure Pendle is a great company, but you're going to change it, take it to the next level. And not only that, you're going to make a bigger impact across the whole entire, I guess, chief people officer role across the world um, as an example of how to create an incredible culture um, and everything else that comes together with it. So I want to wish you much success in that um, and you. You know, continue to spread a lot of goodness and kindness and positivity because you're going to do, going to do absolutely um <laughs> amazing amazing work over there so congratulations thank you then thank you all for your notes here and your thank you notes and just know anytime i'll answer every email so i'm, I'm here i know it's a tough tough time it's frustrating yeah okay. um but yeah for everyone that joined us is not involved with a thousand hires yet um, first of all, go make sure you connect with Kelly, send her an email. She's definitely extremely, even though she has a very big position, but she's very extremely accessible and approachable, that's for sure. So don't let that scare you at all. All you have to do is just yeah. reach out. Um, the second thing is if you're not familiar with 1,000 Hires, I definitely highly encourage you to go check out 1,000hires.com. That's 1-0-0-0-hires.com. Like I said, our mission is to empower job seekers, create leaders, and pay it forward. We have multiple different initiatives that we work on, everything from um, coming to our, building out to our platform where you can create a new style, we have to profile yourself with the video interviews, our community, um, beautiful events like this. Um, our next event actually is next week, Thursday, with Adam Fry Pierce from Envision. Um, and we have um, mentorship sessions where we pair you up with a mentor and multiple other incredible initiatives. Um, and then don't worry, we're going to have Kelly back again because I'm sure she has part two to this incredible thing, um, incredible presentation. So on behalf of everyone, Kelly, thank you so, so, so much. Of course. It's great to meet you all. Have a great rest of the week.